Hi, Rock Church. Hello. This, this is Sister Smith tonight here all the way in Biloxi, Mississippi. This is my last night here. I'll be heading back home tomorrow, and I get the wonderful privilege of having my son with me um, here tonight that many of you know and love very dearly. So it is good to have each one of you with us. I'll give us, wait just a few minutes and let everybody join us. Uh, I know some of you probably had a long day. It is Wednesday, what they call it, hump day, over the hump. But we might have a special guest so, in a little hey, while. Hey, there, what's up? Is that my sweetheart or is that somebody else with the Rock Church? <laughs> uh, hi, hey, Sister, Sister Mielis, good to see you. Oh, yep, hello, my honey, my family, he said, laugh out loud. Good to see you here. Um, Ellington is sleeping or we would be showing him, but he would be very grumpy. He might make an appearance. <laughs> he might, he might wake up here in a few minutes. Um, he had a long day at school, so he is plum tuckered out. Try to get him to take a nap earlier, but he would. So anyway, here we are. Wait a few more minutes and- Five on right now. Yeah, it's good to have everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight. Um, Again, here I am in Biloxi, Mississippi. I get the privilege of being with my son and my grandson and uh, enjoying it very much. I go home tomorrow and um, so pray for a safe return for me and um, I just continue to pray for um, my son and my grandson and all yes, of that. Please. And uh, so it's good to, good to see all of you. Hey. hey, Melissa, good to see you. Good to have you join us and uh, all right. Okay. Um, <laughs> trying to see all your little distance away. So if we miss somebody, please forgive us. Um, anyway, I guess we can. Um, let's. Uh, if there, if you've got anything that is for certain prayer that you want us to pray for, if you want to list that here while we're waiting on others to join us tonight, uh, we'll open up with prayer here in just a few moments. Um, so if there's something special. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's funny, Brother Barbara. Good to see you. Uh, um, they're like brothers. Uh, that's something my brother would say, right? Um, so if you have any special requests that you want to be posted on here, you don't mind if you want to just put special and spoken, we'll pray for that. We're going to pray for everybody anyway, but uh, just, you know, if you have a need out there, just give everybody a few minutes to enter in if you a request if you have one. Pray that your day has been good. Uh, again, I'm here from Biloxi, and I uh, get to be with Justin, and so I uh, appreciate oh, him joining us tonight. I might pull a little man over here in a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Sister Miala says, no, he's not, Brother Barber. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. I love that. Uh, that's right. That's right, Brother Barber, that's right. Uh, so... All right, well, let's just open with prayer here, and uh, um, we're just going to pray for y'all if you're there with hey, someone. Becky. Good, Becky, it's good to see you on there. I hope you're feeling better. Uh, good to have you. Um, and I know there's a lot of needs out there. And, uh, let's just remember, uh, let's pray for, you know, people's uh, emotional status right now. Let's pray for their mental status right now. A uh, lot going on. I don't know if it is in your life, but I know there's a lot going on in, in many people that I've talked to. A uh, lot of undercurrents, a lot of things. Um, hi, Sister Evans. Good to see you. Hey, buddy. Good to have you home. I'm buddy Junior. See you there soon. Uh, but let's remember that. We'll just open up with prayer. If you're by somebody, just grab them by the hand, and, and, and we're going to pray. Father, I thank you, Lord, Jesus, for tonight. I thank you, Lord, for your opportunity that we have to come to you as a body of Christ, oh God. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that you're ever with us, Lord, and ever present, dear Jesus. So, God, I thank you, Lord, that you are so for us, dear Jesus, Lord, and all that you're done, doing and all that you are, God. Lord, we pray, dear Jesus, that you will touch and you'll minister tonight. 
tonight, Father. Loose your spirit to touch everyone's mind, Lord. Touch their bodies tonight. Refresh them, Lord, in Jesus' name. We loose that spirit of refreshing, oh God. Lord, in restoration upon them tonight, dear Jesus. Lord, that they'll feel that refreshing, oh God. Feel not only their minds, but their spirits, oh Lord. Lord, they'll become strong in you tonight, dear Jesus. We don't have what it takes, God, but you have everything that we need. And we come to you tonight. We step into all that you are tonight, God. Lord, believing, dear Jesus, Lord, that you can do anything above and beyond whatever we can ask or think, dear Jesus. And Lord, we bring these needs to you and we're going to lay them right here at this altar, God, right before us where we're at with you, Lord. We're going to give them to you, Lord, for you to take care of according to your will and your way, dear Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to do that. Thank you for being our loving Father, God. Thank you for touching us. Thank you for saving us. And we give you the glory and the praise, Lord. Thank you for answering these needs. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. All right, so um, you want to start? Yeah, oh, I, I see a little head yeah, moving over there. It doing. might be, Tater Bug might be waking up there. Um, Justin will go check on him. That's where he's leaving my, my grandson. You know, there he is. I see eyeballs. He might be making his way over here. Or he might be grumpy. We don't know. <laughs> uh, you, okay, let me go see him, and Justin's going to come talk to y'all for just a moment. Hey, so we were discussing uh, a few things um, beforehand, and uh, I want to talk about, I guess, what is our perception? Are we seeing... 2020 oh what a year it's been um often i refer to the book of ezekiel for uh when it comes to biblical perception and how often uh god can send something into our lives uh or we can walk into something into our lives uh, whether placed by him or not and we perceive it to be one thing and it actually is another and uh in Ezekiel, uh, I want to say it's 45, I, don't quote me on that, I have it in my uh, phone, I, I can make sure we have that later, but in Ezekiel, God has placed him uh, in a river, and he tells him to walk a thousand paces, and it's up to his ankles, and he walks a thousand paces, and it's up to his knees, and so on, all the way up until where he walks so far that it's, uh, it's here at his chin, and he can't, you know, he can't really stand and he's, he kind of has a panic moment. He said, God Almighty, I'm, are you going to destroy me? I'm, I'm about to drown. And in that moment where he panics, God puts him on top of the mountain place. And, and I think I've preached this message before there at the rock. Um, but it's become more evident to me how often times something feels like it's going to destroy us and kill us. And it's really meant for something different. So when God puts him on top of the mountain place, he shows him exactly where he was at. Now all of a sudden he sees this river and he sees how much life and prosperity it brings forth. And it's really incredible and it's beautiful because, you know, there's a saying, um, you lose sight of the tree for the forest or vice versa. And, and what it is is our, our focus and our perception, it may be, in the right place, in the right vicinity, but it might be focused on the wrong dynamic. And this year has been a year of uh, loss of focus in a sense. Um, and uh, you can see my, <laughs> you can see the phone in my glasses because I have this light on. Let's see what it's like if I do this. There we go. Maybe that's a little better. Uh, so, <clears throat> You know, this year has brought everything upon us. It seems like a, a pandemic that has completely altered the state of our world and um, in a way that who knows how it will ever, you know, return or come back to, uh, you know, f government financing and elections and killer wasps and you name it. And it's real easy to lose focus and to put our uh, focus of our perception into the correct dynamic sometimes and uh, God has shown time and time again where when we don't lose focus there you know it's, it's like Peter in the boat 
his perception initially was in the right place. It was Jesus, you know, if you bid me to come, let me come. And his, his, his perception was, was godly and it was, it was in the correct place. And then all of a sudden his eyes started to wander and he sees the waves and he sees the ocean and he starts sinking. In our life, I think sometimes can be full of those moments as long as we step out of the boat. It can, it can have many of those moments where we have this opportunity to look to the left and the right and see these waves because when you're out of the boat, you're in, you know, you're in the, uh, the circumstances of, of the water. You're not in the safety of a boat. And I believe the Rock Church has always been a church that has not been afraid to step out of the boat. And I think each one of you in a personal sense and even in, in, in a sense of the whole church has had the moments where you realize like, oh, hey, we're in the middle of the ocean in a storm and it, you know, it's, it's getting that footing. But the perception of the Rock Church under the, the leadership of, of, of all the uh, pastoral staff and, and, and all that has been, uh, you know, majority of that has been focused in the right place. But I don't want you to be discouraged because you feel like you're sinking or you feel like, you know, Ezekiel felt like he was sinking, like he was about to drown because God will establish for you uh, one way or another that when he pla places you on top of the mountain to show you what's really going on, that it's, it's only positive, uh, positive things and it's a, it's, it's a blessing where God has you. It's a blessing where God has a lot of his people Although it may not seem like it, it's it's kind of like a final preparation uh, before the final push. And it's a chance for us to catch our rest. And it's a chance for us to uh, catch a breath, even though it doesn't feel like it. It's a chance for us to make sure the foundation we have in God is strong and established. It's a chance for us to work on the internal things that oftentimes we don't get to work on uh, due to the fact of us having to be busy at church you know uh, hey sister uh, McCulloch and uh, sister Diane hey um, there's things that when we're in the house of God and, and you're involved in ministries there's a lot of times there's certain things you can't focus on while being there and I believe that this year has been one of the hardest years to focus, but it has also been one of the greatest opportunities for us to refocus the areas in our life that God has called us to, to refine those rough spots or to heal those hurts or to, excuse me, take away uh, our shame and, 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 and things of that nature. So it's all about how we perceive it. I can look into, you know, there's some mess that I've had <laughs> the last couple of days and, and even really over the last couple of years. And it's, and it's uh, mind boggling half the time. And I look at it and I think, oh, this is just going to kill me. It's just going to kill me. But God has spoken so many times throughout this process of how he's got me and how there's only greater things to come from this testimony and how he's going to establish me and establish things for my son and, and for my family. So it doesn't seem like it. It doesn't feel like it, but my perception is on his plan and not my circumstance. Not every day, not every second. And sometimes I have to make sure I look and I say, God's got it. God's got it. Do your part, Justin. Do your part. Do what you're supposed to do because God's got it. And uh, and I think that the Rock Church is there. I believe that's what y'all are doing. But I want to uh, give you some assurance that it is, it is tough right now. And it seems crazy, but you are in the right place and you are in the right mindset. Not everybody who has virtual church on Wednesday are logging in in other churches and other places. A lot of people are skipping out even when they have um, church in the main building, you know, because of this pandemic. And they have a reason, they have an excuse. 
And some of them have legitimate reasons, and obviously we want everybody to be safe, but you know, there's, there's a difference when your commitment and your perception of your commitment flips a switch too. And uh, I believe that uh, those of you who are logged in right now, I believe God's gonna bless you tremendously. I believe God is honoring the fact that even though your perception says one thing, you are waiting for his perception to be established in your life. And I just think, I think the world of, of y'all, and I love y'all. I don't know if little man's awake or asleep. Um, and I'll let my mom kind of tag in on some of this. And, uh, and we'll kind of do, maybe do a little back and forth. But that's just a, I know it's, I know it's not a long word, but I believe that uh, God will provide clarity uh, as, it, as it comes about. That's what the mountaintop did, uh, the hilltop, once he was uh, placed there by God. That's what it did. And, uh, you know, it's not time to get spiritual vertigo from going from one spot to the next, but it's to have clear eyes and, and an open heart for what God is about to do because he's going to ask and he's going to require things that um, are not the norm that we've had. Uh, you know, I've been in church for you know, 33 years, whether I wanted to be or not at times. Um, but we'll just say for 20 years of that, that I knew what was going on. Um, you know, there's, there's, there's that dynamic. I, I'm going to have to do church and do God in a way that I, I haven't had to in 20 years. And I think that's what God's trying to get us to, to where we stop doing it our way. We stop doing it, um, the way ritualism and traditionalism has always had us do to where now it's time for us to get to the, the you know, separate the meat from the bone and, and the things that God's gonna feed it, feed those that are hungry and, uh, and those who are, are willing to, to press on even when it's, it's something that's not quite the, the same way that we've done it. Right. Some of you have been in church for, I don't even know, Long, long enough to have been my mother and father is the amount of years you've been in a church. Mm -hmm. And uh, hey, Alan, that's my friend from Biloxi. Oh, wonderful. And uh, hey, yeah. he, uh, you know, the the thing is, is, is it's going to break the mold of what we know. And we've seen it in the Bible. We saw it, especially when Jesus died. We saw, we saw the mold break there. We saw the mold break from uh, out of Egypt into Moses. We saw that change from uh you know moses to david and we saw so there's so many times where god has brought his people out of whether bondage uh whether oppression um famine uh disease different things pandemics and everything else where he has taken them out of that and transitioned into a new mold of how to walk with him right. whether god comes back tomorrow or he comes back a hundred years from now, I believe that every time he breaks that old mold and puts in a new mold, it's to prepare us for the day he shows up. Mm -hmm. And it's not only for that, because it's not just supposed to be us that goes, it's to prepare us and to give us the insight for us to be able to reach those around us. Um, my uh, youth pastor here that I sit under uh, and, and love dearly, Brother Jonathan Boryong, um, who I uh, made sure it was okay to, to miss youth service to be here tonight. Um, you know, he sent out something earlier today about the top 10 reasons people miss church, and a lot of it has to do, or not miss church, but do, don't want to go. The top, you know, people who are fresh off the street or invited, the things that make them never want to come back, and a lot of that are traditions that are we're used to in Pentecost. Mm -hmm. And so, it doesn't mean we let go of our standard. Yeah. It doesn't mean we right. let go of biblical principles. Those things that are black and white of the Bible will always be black and white in the Bible. Um, it doesn't mean we get rid of the letters of red that we, you know, dispute the words of Jesus. What it does mean, though, is that we get into a format, much like Peter had to when it was time for the Gentiles to be welcomed in to the new birth. He had to have a mold break. And that's right. what I think a lot of us have to do in classic Pentecost, classic apostolic, this traditional uh, lifestyle we have. It's breaking that and it's establishing this thing God wants so that way when 
somebody comes to my rooftop and asks me, how must I be saved? Mm -hmm. I'm able to transcend past what, you know, just the, the basics of, uh, of this, that, and the other that we've been raised with, but to where we can actually impart upon them and give them the love of Christ and the uh, plan of salvation that baptism in Jesus' name is vital, that receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost by evidence of speaking in other tongues is vital, you know, asking for forgiveness and repentance, and then continuing on with that lifestyle, uh, you know. So I know I've probably rambled a little bit. I brought you over here, but kept talking. But I love you all so much, and I, I am such a believer in the Rock Church, and I'm such a believer of those who are in Clute and Lake Jackson and Richwood and Freeport and, and, and all the surrounding areas, Oyster Creek and, and from 2004 to 45 and 288 and, and everywhere in between. I am a firm believer of the love that y'all have for people. And I am a firm believer that deep down inside that there's such a love and a passion for God. But now is the time in 2020 when all life seems to be falling apart and there's uh, stimulus checks and there's chain shortages and everything else, that now right. is the time for us to be present for other people. And what a time to do it when we have social media and everything else. Right. But. Well, I liked what um, I, my husband posted it. I believe some of you probably already watched it, but. Uh, Jason, or the Pastor Jason Cisco preached a message on this is a test. And if you haven't heard it, um, go pull it up. It's called This Is a Test. You can find it on YouTube. And it goes uh, kind of hand in hand with what you're saying because more lately I've noticed that this is a test to see if where we're going to fall in the middle of this, how we're going to respond, how we're going to act. All this that's going on, God knows it. He's allowing it. And um, some of you may have, you know, I'd like to tell you I've done everything perfect, I've responded perfect, but I have not. Um, I've seen where I've, my very human parts, um, I'm, I'm, I'm nothing but human. And, but you know what it does, it gives God more glory because I realize just um, how much I'm, I need Him. He's the only one that can do it through us and be that through us. And it keeps running over in my head, you know, uh, what he had said too on another message where he said you know we've got to be the opposite um i'd like to tell you that it's easy just to get up there and be the opposite sometimes i don't even like what god's doing i mean let's just be honest can can you know somebody send a thumbs up about that you you don't like what god is doing your flesh doesn't like it it, it doesn't make sense seems like it's been forever and a day feels like it never changes feels like it's always the same old same old we all know that that's the voice of the enemy piggybacking on the test because he likes to ride the test with us to encourage us with thoughts that are not of God. Um, what do you do in those cases? Somebody can text that if you want, but what do you do in those cases when you don't like God's plan? You don't like what's going on. You have, you've, you've done what you've been told to do. You've prayed. And I feel like this goes kind of with what you're saying there because, mm -hmm. you know, uh, how many of you are tired of wearing the mask? You're tired of uh, not just that, you're tired of the, the change that is brought. You know, you just keep saying to yourself, like, I want normal. I want to go back to normal. Uh, I like that. Um, thank you, honey. He said, keep going. You just, you just got to set your sight that I'm just journeying through this land. This is not my final destination. This is not where I want to stall. I don't want to hesitate here i want to keep going um, it's the other side that we're making it to and the test is preparing me for the other side that's what that's what all of this is it's to it's kind of like the final touches you know you go through a manufacturing company and, and they're making something and it goes through the final stages of inspection mm -hmm. they put that little slip of paper inside the product or inside the shirt or that where they have tested this before they begin to mass produce it to say that this is going to endure, this is going to have substance, this isn't a piece of trash, you know, this isn't going to fall apart at first use, this isn't going to, and, and so uh, there was another one, keep him in your sights, that's very good, keep praying, um, very good, you got to, we've got to, we got to pray, that's the only thing that gets us through is praying and surrendering and yielding and, 
and asking for him to help us doing it through us. Yeah. Um, just well, just one more thing we're just talking about, you know, perception is how you see things. So one thing that I would recommend right. is pray, Lord, I pray on your eyes today. Lord, give me your perception. Yeah. Because if not, you know, I for those of you who haven't had to wear glasses your whole life, you're, you're, you're blessed. I've had to wear them for the last 30 years. Um, but when I don't have my glasses, initially I can see fine. But after a little while, my eye starts going in, I start seeing double, things get real blurry. Mm -hmm. I get a headache and I get frustrated right. because I can't see yeah. correctly. I know that something's there, I know it has words, right. but I can't read it or I can't see what that sign says or I don't know where exactly where something is because I don't have the correct vision on my eyes. Right. So when I put on God's eyes when I put on his perception it's like taking my sight which is blurry which I can see so but I, I can't quite make it out I know God's saying something right. but can't quite make it out or is that God's handwriting whose handwriting is that I can't tell what that's doing is Lord if I put on your eyes I put on your perception now I can read and I could see that uh, Ellington's little thing over says the Holy Ghost is your power I wasn't able to read a Sunday school thing Without it, true, good, good illustration. And and so you know, there's plenty of things where uh, things are in front of us, and we can't tell whether it's sent from God. We can't tell whether it's sent from the enemy. We can't tell if it's something we right. walked in because of our flesh, right. or this, that, or the other, because we don't have the eyes of God on. So we pray. Right, and that on happens to that happens to the most seasoned Christian too. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times people say, "I want to grow in God." I, you're, we're always growing in God, and mm -hmm. there's been times that. I may have recognized the spirit or something attacking me mm -hmm. two weeks ago, but I may get hit with something, one, I've never been hit by before, mm -hmm. or it's on a level that I've never experienced before. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we got to quit beating ourselves up when we think, well, I should have seen that one coming. Sometimes the enemy is, deception is his, is his game, right? So he's going to try to deceive us in right. messing with well, our perception. And, and think about tornadoes. Tornadoes affect the rich. They affect the poor, right. and neither one of them know when they're coming. No. So some things are just tornadoes in your life. So true. It doesn't have to be from the enemy. It doesn't necessarily have to be got from God. It could just be life being thrown in in the mix. It rains on the just and the unjust. Right. And all of a sudden, a tornado hits, and boom, sometimes the mansions are all hit. Right. Sometimes all the right. trailers at the trailer park are flipped <laughs> up. Right. Sometimes it's just a little, you know, it, it, it blows right by you, mm -hmm. and you realize... How blessed you were yeah. so you know random storms random things that come across things like that you know it's mm -hmm. it's some things you're not gonna see coming well and some people just lose power some people lose everything mm -hmm. uh, so the same storm may affect each person different too right. um, you know whereas and we can't judge someone and say well you didn't you didn't you know you didn't handle this like I did right. well they may have lost everything and you may just have lost your electricity right. Uh, so, you know, and so, yeah, and it's, you know, some people are storm chasing and right. some people, you know, they rush and they're frustrated because they got all the kids and all the blankets downstairs to the, right. the attic, you know, the basement or whatever and nothing even happened. So don't be frustrated with, with what's going on around you or what's going on even inside of you. Just ask God to open your eyes yes. to what he wants you to see. Ask God to open up, um, you will, you know, give you, like I said, pray on his eyes, open right. up your perception with his eyes and his perception, looking through the blood of Christ, looking through the grace of his eyes. Yes. And, uh, yes. and, and then, so and then, uh, you know, analyze what's going on. Yes. And that's, and that's where, you know, I think, I think a lot of us are in the world, not yeah. just on this feed. Well, and it, this may be, seem a little different too, but I've got to say it because the Lord keeps resonating it. Heard a man say, you know, the Lord had shown him some things, and one of the things he said is, brace yourself. And I, I feel like that now more than ever, I, I personally want my foot on the rock. I want to be so close to the rock that the wind can't blow me away from it. Um, that I am hiding in the rock, if I could even put it that way, the cleft, you know, that those of you that know the songs, the old songs that it tells, it talks about that, hide me in the cleft of the rock. And um, so I, 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 during this time, find the rock, get close to Jesus Christ and 
um, that, that's good. One of you put on there, the anchor holds. Thank you, Brother Barbara. And, and it is true. Hold on to that. Brace yourself in that. The unchanging hand of God. And like he's saying, the perception of Jesus Christ. Keep that on. Keep his glasses on. Keep his look on, outlook on it. And uh, we'll, we, you'll get through it. We'll get through it. And, uh, you know, a lot of times people feel like living for God is like being on an island. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was on St. Lu at St. Lucia once, and they have a hurricane harbor. And what they do is they take all the boats and they put it inside this little harbor, and the hurricanes can't affect it. Cool. because it's shielded by this big volcano kind of thing. This big source of power becomes its protection and uh, and keeps it from, sure, the, the boats may rock a little bit, yeah. but the destruction doesn't take place. And, uh, you know, we, we have to get closer to that power source, and we don't fully understand the power of God, and, and it can seem disruptive in our lives at times, and it can seem like... Uh, you know, if this thing blows, I don't know where I'm going to be. But when the hurricane comes, that's the place we want to be. We want to be on the island that has the harbor that protects us, you know, from all of that. So yes. the farther inland you are, the less hurricane damage you have anyway. So, right. uh, you know. Very anyway. good. I remember this email. I wish I could remember it perfectly before we close here. Uh, but it, it gave the gist of it this way. The, the farmer would always make this comment. He said, I can sleep. I, um, basically, I can sleep through the storm. And what he was saying was that he prepared um, as for a storm before the storm got there. So when the storm came, he was able to sleep during the storm. He was able to rest in the Lord, you know, the place. And so get your you know, prepare, do what you got to do day to day, do what you do, what you need to do to, to get into that rock and stay there and, and make it your hiding place now. And, uh, it'll, it'll prepare you for anything. I promise. Yeah. Cause the Lord, the Lord knows. So let's hide in him. Yeah. And, uh, Amen. anyway, well, thank you. That was very good. Thank you. So glad, glad to, to be, be here. Love all of you. Saw some of your comments. We'll talk and uh, just miss y'all. We did Love some beautiful comments. Sorry yes, if we didn't get a chance get, to read them all and, see if and little man's awake and share them. Share them all. And uh, but they were all very good, and I know um, that others have read it and are going to be encouraged from that. And uh, so thank you all for joining. And he's out. He's out cold. So <coughs> we may get to do this in, uh, again uh, next week. Will be our last. Um, lesson me and my husband will be bringing that last lesson of um, exploring um, God's Word uh, the Word of God to to y'all and you don't want to miss that lesson it's very informative about the last days and so uh, we didn't want to do it this week um, with me being away we wanted to finish that together so I hope you'll tune in and join us for that and uh, we love y'all and um, ask God to bless you and keep you and be safe and We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.